Welcome to this episode of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, and I'll be your host for today's show. As has been the case for the last couple of weeks, we are filming remotely uh, where my guest and I are each um, in their safe place uh, trying to shelter um, as asked. Uh, but that doesn't stop us from covering some of the topics. And we're trying to focus on topics that um, boards need to focus on during the uh, coronavirus uh, crisis. So um, today, um, interestingly, we're going to talk about an audit committee's focus in the COVID-19 environment. And joining me as uh, someone who's been a very stable resource these days, uh, Paula Loop, who's the leader of PwC's Governance Insights Center. Welcome back, Paula. Thank you for having me. Well, I want to thank you and your team. We are obviously relying on the center quite a bit for information, but I know you guys, that's been a major focus and you've put out some interesting information. So I appreciate um, that that you're helping us out here during the crisis. Always here for you. So the first thing I want to talk about, this is going to be an interesting uh, time, the you know, doing the financial close um, at the end of the quarter, uh, obviously unprecedented in the sense that everything happened so quickly during this quarter. Um, and so that means the financial close cycle, um, would, I would believe, would have to be very challenging. So what are some of the factors um, that audit committees need to think about as, as they're going through this process? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think this is going to be one of the most challenging financial close processes that many companies have been through in a long time. So I think about it in sort of four areas. First of all, um, it's sort of a, like a how, who, what, and why, I guess, or when I can think about it. So how is the financial close going to happen? So as we all know, we're all sheltering in place. So many, many things are going to be happening virtually that some companies might have done some of these things virtually in the past, but probably not 100% of these things virtually. So how is the financial close going to happen? How are reviews, supervision of accounting teams and what's actually going through the process, um, being able to supervise others around the world and so forth. So how the close takes place will be very different than it's been in the past. The second item is, is by whom. So when I think about it, um, there's probably some disruption in who is going to do play a key role in the close. You might have a CFO, a controller, somebody, a key person that's out ill, or people that have that are working part time or different schedules because they have children at home or what have you. So you're going to have probably different elements of who is playing key roles in the closing process. And I think the audit committee number, needs to understand the changes around the who is doing these things. Um, what they're doing is also going to be different. There's many financial reporting topics that will be new for companies this quarter, not because they're a new standard, but because they haven't applied to the company in a long time. So things like an event-driven um, impairment assessment or something around going concern or liquidity, those kinds of things, there's gonna be new topics that you'll have to make sure that you feel comfortable that the finance department has the right skills to really deliver on that. And then finally, the when I think is an important factor. I think most companies I'm hearing from really are trying to keep a very stable environment and keep their investor communications consistent and they want to make the same deadlines they might have done in the past related to financial reporting and investor um, communication. But I would argue that um, some of these areas are very complex, and I think it's really the role of the audit committee to step back and think about, um, or emphasize, I guess I should say, that finance departments should take as much time as they need to get it right. The SEC has allow allowed a 45-day extension for some of the reporting requirements, so I think that the audit committee is in a really good position to be sort of the one that steps back and says, have we really done the best job that we can? Are we taking advantage of more time if we need it? So lots of things there. Yeah, one of the things that I didn't think of to your comments was we always talk about a, a executive being out. Well, that could equally affect the audit committee. If you have the audit chair mm -hmm. and the financial expert who, um, you know, for some reason, 
you know, catches the virus, that could be a huge issue. That's absolutely right. That's a, it could be a critical time, right? Just a couple of days. And if somebody's out, then you need to have somebody be able to step in. Yeah. So I know we don't have time. First of all, if we covered all the su subjects related to the audit committee, we would have to do a multi-phase show. But And I know we don't have time to talk about the technical accounting details, but are there particular areas in accounting that you know are sort of going to be especially challenging right now? Absolutely. Um, I would say that cash flow forecasting is probably the root of a lot of challenges um, for a variety of reasons. One, to think about liquidity. Two, to think about um, you know what's going to be coming going forward from a going concern perspective for the for the company. So there's, and then that is also some of the base of information that's needed to think about impairment of some of your long lived or indefinite lived assets like goodwill or intangibles. So cash flow forecasting will be a really critical component. And of course, that's going to be super challenging when we don't even know when we're going to be, um, you know, economically running around again. So out of our um, shelter in place mode and so forth. So that's probably the biggest judgment area where I think companies will use and leverage some outside resources and so forth. And, um, you know, just broadly, those kinds of estimates are going to really be a challenge. Uh, the thing I would really emphasize with audit committees is this might be a time when you want to get together with the CFO or the chief accounting officer or controller and your external auditor kind of early in the process to just understand what are the big topics that we're not used to dealing with that are now on our plate um, that could have a significant impact on the company and sort of kind of get a heads up or a learning about those early on. And then, um, of course, you would go through the normal audit committee reporting and oversight process. But it, this is probably not the reporting period for you to um, hear about some of these big challenges at the, uh, you know, when you're just close to the reporting deadline. This is the stuff you want to hear about in advance. Well, when it rains, it pours. So uh, that sort of seems you know, you'd like not to have these challenges, but I'll, I'll bring another one up to you that I think is a challenge. And that's the sort of the whole genre of uh, disclosure um, in mm -hmm. this. So, you know, complying with the regulatory requirements and providing investor insights, um, I would think is going to be particularly challenging. It was challenging before the crisis. <laughs> And now with the crisis and the disclosure, I think it's gonna be even more challenging. So what areas should uh, audit committees be thinking about with respect to this, or at least spending more time on? Yeah, no, I think everybody's financial reporting should look different this quarter as it relates to COVID-19, right? So every investor wants to know what was the impact on the company, on the company's business, on their operations related to the virus. So. For sure, you're going to have all of that. Um, there's certainly a lot of disclosure around um, whether or not the company's taken advantage of the um, CARES Act. So any implications from that would be another new disclosure area. Again, a lot of focus on liquidity, um, debt covenants, um, going concern implications, and even explaining and um, providing some transparency around cash flow forecasting and estimates and judgments. And the purpose there is, again, to shed light for the investors on your thought process and sort of some of the scenario planning you did to come up with those really important estimates. Nobody has the crystal ball, but being a little bit transparent about how you got there will be helpful for everyone. So um, the audit committee has always had a lot on their plate, and we haven't even discussed those companies where um, all of the risk management is located in the audit committee, not just the financial reporting. But what other what other uh, topics do you think right now are especially important for the audit committee to be focusing on? Well, you're absolutely right. The audit committee has a, always has a ton on their plate. So I guess my point here would be just to make sure you don't lose sight of things like whistleblower calls and the importance of making sure you take the time, even though everyone's super busy, but take the time to investigate anything there that you need to look into, um, thinking about other components of ethics and compliance. And then internal audit oversight is an interesting one. A um, couple of the things there, one, you're definitely gonna wanna take a look at the internal audit plan and see what's practical to continue to still do and what things might need to be changed up 
But you also might want to think about leveraging internal audit to help you in your oversight role, either in taking a look at some of the closing processes, which might be new, um, and so forth. So I think the, the, you know, the broader landscape of things that are on the plate of the audit committee, unfortunately, are probably still there. So um, a, lot, a lot still to be done. So here's one area, you know, we always talk about directors serving on multiple boards. Um, typically, somebody that serves on the audit committee serves on multiple audit committees. This is where that actually could be helpful, I think, if somebody has the experiences from a, from a couple companies that can sort of uh, streamline their, their process or their discussions um, with some other good ideas. I'm not sure that's enough to warrant the concern that people have about overboarding, but in this case, it could serve to be a valuable tool. Um, Agree. Absolutely agree. And also leveraging, like I mentioned earlier, your resources. So your external auditors, they have the opportunity to see a lot of other companies and how they're dealing with things. So leveraging that, even if you use, you know, evaluation expert bankers and so forth. So there is, there is a, you have an ability to leverage outside information. Um, and I think boards should take advantage of that. So I know you guys at the center have done a white paper on this audit committee topic and um, an excellent webinar last week. Um, so for those people that want to take a deeper dive into the sort of the uh, topic that we've touched on here, um, what's the best way that they can tap these resources? Yes, please go to PwC's Governance Insights Center webpage and you will find access to the replay of the webcast. It's an hour long, um, but I think it has a lot of really good detail in it. And then we also have a companion sort of um, audit committee guidebook uh, that we're, we put out that has a lot of the key issues and some questions, different things audit committees should be asking about. So I think it'll be really helpful to everyone. Well, uh, thank you, Paul, and thanks for joining us. I know I'm going to be tapping your team again as we um, you know, look at other challenges that are connected with uh, COVID-19. So I appreciate the time. And uh, again, we'll look forward to talking with you again. Terrific. Thank you for having me. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We will be back again next week where we take on another COVID-19 topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. 